What's going on everyone, James here from Artificial Entertainment, and welcome to the first episode of Busting Into Blender, the brand new series where we go into the free to use 3D powerhouse program known as Blender, and I show you guys easy ways to make awesome models, animations, and rigging setups that you can use in your 3D renders or even in your games. And in today's episode, we're going to go over how to make a really nice but easy to make log cabin that will look something like this by the time you're done. Now let's take a look at what we're going to need to set all this up. Now as you can see, we have a fresh scene in Blender here, so I'm just going to drag and drop and delete everything, and then we're going to shift A, mesh, and cylinder. Go down to the cylinder properties here, and change the vertice count from 32 to 85 to smooth it out, and then rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Now we're going to scale it down with S, and then scale it along the Y axis to elongate it a little bit till we get more something like a log shape, because again, we are making a log cabin. Now once we have that shape, we're going to go ahead and go to the modifiers properties with the wrench, add modifier, and we're going to add an array. Change the factor of X to 0 and the factor of Y to 1.03. And then we're going to change the count from 2 to 10. Now we're going to take this and we're just going to duplicate it once. And then we're going to duplicate this again. And we're going to go R, Z, 90. So this way we have all of our walls for orientation at least. We still have, you know, obviously the fourth wall that we need to make. Um, take this, drag this up in here like this. Now, I like more of a Lincoln Log setup, so it's entirely up to you how you set these walls up, but this also makes it easier for lining up things later, so it's entirely up to you, but I'm going to do the Lincoln Log type setup. So to do the Lincoln Log type setup, it's just realistically just equal exposure on all corners as best you can get it, because then once you have that, you take this wall, duplicate it, and then drag it along the Y axis until you get the equal lineup. Now, once you're happy with your shape, you can go ahead and select these and then control A to apply all the array modifiers once hovered over them. Now that we have our walls, let's go ahead and add in our roof and our floor. So we're gonna shift A, mesh, and we're gonna add in a cube. We're gonna take the cube and we're gonna drag it along the X axis until it's somewhat in the middle of our entire scene here. And then we're gonna drag it up on the Z axis and then we're gonna drag it and make sure it's scaled a little bit on the Z axis as well. This way it's kind of shrink down and then we're gonna scale it up, shrinking it down again as we go. And then we're just looking for something that's a rough-ish shape of our overall uh, wall. Now, if we take this, we can tab back into edit mode here and then three to go into face selection mode. Now we'll actually take this and we'll dra drop it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, so while in edit mode here, we're gonna go G and Y and we're gonna drag it up. Now, something we can do to make this a little easier for ourselves is we can actually go to the little snapping icon here. So it's the horseshoe icon and then we can change it. So that way it's gonna snap to edge. So now if I do this again, it's actually going to allow me to pick the edge associated to this uh, particular cylinder. And this just actually makes it easier for much more accurate lineups. Because now if I take this and do GX, I can do the same thing on the X axis. Nice lineup on that crisscross. So I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to go G and then Y and just keep going until we get to that nice lineup. So therefore now I just could do this last one here, which is G and then X. And now we have a nice perfect roof section. Now I am going to take this top and then just G and Z to shrink it down a little bit. Now, if we go back into object mode, we're actually gonna take this, duplicate it and make it our floor as well. So we're gonna shift T and then we're just gonna drag it down until it roughly fits in the area where we want it to. You don't want it to be like right flush with the bottom. You just want it to be within reason, right? Cause then I'm actually gonna shrink it down a little bit more. And then you also want to make sure to scale down its size as well. So it's not clipping too heavily into the rest of your building. So with the floor placed, we'll go back to the roof here, go into edit mode, and then we're going to add in a loop cut with control R. And then we're just going to left click and right click. This way it drops it right dead center. Two to go into edge selection mode, grab this edge, and we're going to go G and Z and bring it up until we have a nice roof shape. Now, as you can see here though, we need to add some edges to it. So we're going to go in back into object mode, S, shift and Z. And then now we got that overhang. So if we go back into object or edit mode, I mean, go back and select that edge again, and then we lift it. The look is so much better with that little bit of overhang. Just gives it a little bit more depth. So I wanted to show you guys how it looks with both, but I honestly always recommend giving it that bit of overhang. So what we're going to do now is we need to create a little bit more topology on our mesh. So this way we can have a little bit more to work with. So if we do a control R for a loop cut and then just left click, right click, one to go into vertex selection mode, and then we're going to go up to the snapping tool, go to the drop down, and then we're going to select on vertex. And this is going to allow us to snap to vertex. So we can select these two vertices here. So we want to select these because we're going to snap them up and make this one line. So we're going to take these two on the other side, do the same thing, and then GZ, and then it'll snap up to those vertices above it. Because then we can take this one on the other side, and this one as well, and then G and Z, and it'll snap it down. 
Now, even though we have, you know, vertices that are overlapping, we can do A to select everything, and then M to merge them, and then select on by distance. And that will take away those four vertices. And then, boom, now we have a nice flush edge all the way around. So now we need to add the um, sort of extrusion inset inside the roof. So to make that, it's actually really easy. We can just select this while in uh, face selection mode, I to inset, create sort of a rough shape. Don't worry about the fact that this isn't... Um, you know, in setting upwards, we can make that what we need. Just make a rough shape. Try to make them as even as you can. You know, they don't have to be perfect. But once you have them sized, you can G and Z to bring them up, get them somewhat even. And then what you can do is S to scale them in. And this way, you get nice, even topology all the way around that you can then just E to extrude and create that nice little inset. And then you can do the same thing on the other side here, where we go I to inset, create that, you know, nice little even shape, do it on the other side, take both of them, bring them up, scale them in. And the best part is, is, you know, if you want to create more or less insets, it's really up to you how much you drag them up and then scale them in. You know, you can use this process to create a lot of really cool shapes and geometry. Now, one thing I also recommend is making sure to try and keep these um, insets as even as you can. Like, I think I actually made this one a little too much, so I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this back just a bit. So this way it's a little bit more even, and this is just gonna make life easier later on. All right, so now that we have our roof, our walls, and our floor, let's start adding in our doors and our windows, and then we'll start adding in the detail pieces such as the shingling and the paneling that's gonna go on the inside of the roof here. So to be able to make the doors and windows, we're just gonna go mesh, shift A, and then add a cube. Now the cube is going to be our kind of main um, element here. So we're gonna take this, drag it up, and this is gonna be our first window. And then we're gonna take it, shift D, duplicate it. And then we're gonna go S and Z to make it more of a door sort of shape and drag it down something like this. Now, what we wanna do is click on the cube that's gonna be our window, go into edit mode, and we're gonna select this face and then as well as the back face here. So we want this one and then this one. And then we're gonna go I to inset. And we're just gonna create this shape early for you know just the purposes of ease in all honesty because then what we can do is we can take this duplicate it and then just drag it over on the y-axis like this because then what we're going to do is we're going to take our door and we're going to push actually we'll take everything and we're going to push it back so this way it's going to be clipping into our overall building and then we're going to take it make sure that we have the uh, edge selection selected under our snapping tool. So up here, just a little drop down and select on edge and then G and Z. And this way it'll align it with our floor. So this way we have it going all the way through our wall and it's aligned with our floor section. So it's a little bit more appropriate for what we're trying to set up. Now we also just need to take this and move it along the Y a little bit as well. So this way it looks a little bit more even something like this, because then what we can do is we can take all of these, make sure your door is your active object, and then control J to join them together. Click on the log wall, add modifier, Boolean, eyedropper, and then click on the cubes. And this way it'll use these, if I hide these, to make really nice, perfect cuts through the walls that you can then use to be able to use for your window frames and door frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply this modifier with control A, and then we're gonna go alt H to bring these back in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to scale these in because these are actually going to be the windows and doors for our cabin. Since they're already scaled and shaped exactly what we need, there's no sense in letting them go to waste. So we'll go ahead and scale these in, making them a little bit more appropriately sized because then what we'll do is go into edit mode and now you'll see why we made those uh, insets on these already. Because what we can do is go here and here and then we're going to select the shift select the back ones as well. And then we can actually delete these, but actually we're gonna to wanna to make copies first. So we're gonna select the two front ones and then shift D, and then we're gonna drag them forward and then P to separate by selection. And then now we can go back and select these faces and their back ones and delete them. Because what this is gonna do is give us um, already pre-sized window frames that we can use. Like if you were trying to do like a glass shatter animation, a lot of times it's better to keep these separated so now that we have our frame, we can fix these holes by going into edge selection mode with two and then selecting this edge and then it's parallel and then F to fill. So we can just go all the way around and do that, that one process, just selecting each edge and it's parallel and then using F on our keyboard to fill it in. So we'll do this on the other side as well. 
all the way around. Now make sure that you only have those two edges selected because if you have more than those two edges, it will a lot of times create like this weird geometry, like it'll try to connect this to this. So just make sure you're being careful on what you're selecting. Now for the door, we're gonna go ahead and select on this. Uh, we're gonna go into face selection mode and we're gonna select on this face and this face. And we're gonna do kind of like what we did with the windows. But one thing you'll notice is that this is creating more height than the edges here. And that's totally fine. We can go into edge selection mode with two, select this face and this face. And we're actually just gonna drag this up until it's somewhat even. And then we're gonna grab the bottom ones and we're actually gonna go G and Z and we're gonna make it flush with the rest of the bottom panel here. Cause then we can take this face and do like what we did with the windows. And so we're gonna go shift D to duplicate it. Then G and Z, P separate by selection. And then take this face and this face and delete faces. And then go edge selection mode with two, and then we'll fill these in. And we'll fill this in. And see, there's there's a perfect example of making sure you have your edges selected appropriately. <laughs> now, one thing we also want to do, you see this like weird shading error because of this um, extra face here. We're actually just going to select this, delete faces, boom. Now it's nice and smooth, not having any shading issues whatsoever. So now that we have all of our cutouts and our frames set up, let's go ahead and start setting up our windows. So we'll select them, go into edit mode with tab, A to select all, and we're just gonna give them a very slight extrusion. You know, something very minor, just to give them sort of some thickness like they are an actual glass panel, and then we'll slide them back into their frame. Now for the door, we're gonna add a couple of different things um, to the door. So we're gonna go shift A mesh, and we're gonna add a cube. We're gonna scale it down and kind of elongate it a little bit along the Y axes. And then we're also going to shift a mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere as well. Now, what these are going to be is the window and doorknob for the actual door. So we're going to scale this down period or delete on your numpad to kind of zoom in on it and go into edit mode. And what we're going to do is just select any four connecting faces just like this and extrude it. And then we're going to go R and then X or is it R Y? Yeah, R Y. And then we're just going to kind of make it so that way it's, a little more appropriate, straight, kind of like that. Because then we'll just go ahead and RZ, move it around like this, and then line it up to where our door is going to be. Now, we don't want to kind of line it up too great right now, but we're going to add the geometry to the door next, and then we'll line it up. So now that we have our shape, we're going to go to our, back to our door, highlight it, go into object mode, or edit mode. Um, and then we're just going to select any of these faces here, and then extrude, give it that depth and then back into edit mode or object mode, I'm sorry. Um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and now line up the doorknob. So as you can see, now I can scale this down a little bit, make it more appropriate. Looks like that rotation didn't hold. There we go. So now, yeah, that's really it. Now I'm sure as you're thinking, like if you're up close, like those lines are gonna be distracting, right? Well, not if you go right click shade smooth. And boom, now you've got a doorknob and you can't tell what the orientation started as. <laughs> So what we're going to do is now we're going to take this and we're going to drag it up because this, again, this is going to be the window that's going to be in our door. So we're going to take this and drag this up. And this is actually also going to be the thing that fix our origin point because if you see, our origin point for our door is still back in our frame, which is totally fine. Like I said, we're not worried about, worried about that. Um, it's just something we're going to want to keep in mind. So what we'll do is take this window, position it something, you know, something reasonable. Um, and then go to our door, add modifier, boolean, take the eyedropper tool, and then click on the cube, shift A to apply, or sorry, control A to apply it. And then now we have a nice cutout. So what we're going to do is unhide that, scale it in, just like what we did with the uh, doors and windows on the other side. Now we'll just go ahead and select both faces in edit mode, inset them with I, select one face, duplicate it with shift D, drag it forward, and then select both of these faces and delete faces. And then we're going to go edge select and select these edges, F to fill, F to fill, F to fill, and F to fill. All right, so now we have our frame and it looks like I need to separate this. So we're gonna go by selection. And this way I can go ahead and add a little bit of depth, it's a little too much, and push this back in. Because now what we can do to be able to fix the issue of our orientation is we can select the doorknob, the door, the window and then the frame last the frame is the one thing that has good orientation point or origin point and then we control j and as you can see now we have an origin point here 
instead of way over here. Because then we can just select it, tab in edit mode, A to select everything. And then we're just going to take it and drag it up to where the origin point's somewhat in the middle. Drag it over on the Y to where it's on the edge. And then back on the Z to where it's on this kind of corner here. Now, the reason why we want to do that is because if I tab back into object mode and then R Z, you'll see we get a really nice open pivot. And that's the, the origin points matter. Matter for rotation, they matter for scale, they matter for everything. So just keep that in mind. So look at that. We've got the door, which isn't in all the way. Um, we have our door, windows, and our main structure. So the last thing that we're going to need to add are going to be the details, the terracotta roof tiles, as well as the paneling that's going to go in the middle of the roof here. Now we'll do the paneling first, just because that is really easy. And then I'll show you how to do the roof tiles, which is also really easy. It's just, you know, one thing at a time. So what we'll do is we're going to shift a mesh cube. We're going to bring it up, scale it on the Z axes, scale it in on the X axes and the Y. Now, the reason why we're doing this is we're creating more or less a board shape, like a rough board shape. Nothing too perfect, right? Because then we can just take it and we're going to push it in. Now, what we want to do is we want to use the edge snapping to make it so that way we can get pretty decent lineup. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but we just want to get it kind of within there. I think it'll work. Perfect. So it's clipping in just a little bit. I'll take it and put it like that. So now, as you can see, it's... You know, it's going through the section of the roof, but that's totally fine. So what we're going to do is add modifier. We're going to add an array. We're going to change the X to zero, and we're going to take Y, and we're going to put it to a negative value, so negative 1.01. No, not negative 101. <laughs> yeah, we got 1.01. Because then we can take this, and we're just going to take the array and line it up until it gets all the way to the edge. Now, one thing I do recommend is if you end up with this issue, tab into edit mode, A to select everything, S, and then just scale it in on the y axis just a little bit so you get a proper lineup something like this right you want it to make it so that way it's not going to extend past the edge of the roof line that's really all you're trying to do now i do also recommend making sure these are shaded flat i don't know why those were shaded smooth um making sure to take these and apply the array modifier before you do anything else because otherwise this next step is not going to work so make sure to apply this once you're satisfied with its position because then we're going to take it and then we're going to move it along the x-axis, go to our roof, go to face selection mode, and we're going to select this face here. Because then we're going to shift D to duplicate it, drag it forward, P, separate by selection. And then we're going to click on this, go into edit mode, A to select everything. And then we're just going to extrude it back. And then we're going to click on this top face here. And we're going to extrude this. And then we're going to take this face and we're going to extrude this as well. Now, I know this is a weird, funky shape here, but this is going to be exactly what we need to make our cut. So this way, this is only the triangular section. So we're going to go add modifier with the paneling selected, click on Boolean, go to the little eyedropper, and then click on our cube. Now, as you can see, with exact selected, it's not able to do it. But if we go to fast, we're all set. Cuts it real nice. Now, we're going to have to do one small fix, but for this, this is totally fine. So we're going to apply the modifier with control A, delete this cube. And as you can see, the problem I was referring to is that this bottom face here has been removed. So I'm going to go two to go into edge selection mode. And then I'm going to select this whole section here and then F to fill. And this way, the entirety of this is now going to be all solid and we have it cut to this exact shape. So we can take this and drag it back to fit within. Now that we have our shape, we can go into edit mode, A to select all. And then we're going to actually start dragging this along the Y axis outwards. And the reason why is because now what we're going to try and do is make it so this origin point is going to be able to sit pretty much dead center on the line of uh, this part here. So I'm gonna put it into shading mode. It might allow me to be able to see things a little bit better because then I'm gonna try to center this. You do wanna try and center this as best as you can. Um, the more centered it is the first time, the easier it's gonna be for you, trust me. Um, it's Because now once we have it lined up, we'll go back into object mode, make sure our panel is selected, add modifier, and then we can go mirror, X and then Y instead. And then now go back into solid view. You'll see it's not perfect, but I can take this, slide this over because there's a little bit of a gap here. And then now it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty even. Um, and we can take this shifty, 
and drag it back. This way we can get the other side as well with the same one. Now, as you can see here, the scale and size doesn't always line up perfectly just because we didn't really make everything associated perfectly, but this still works. The one thing I do also recommend is bring it up so that way there's only a slight lip, nothing too dramatic, but you don't want to make it flush on either side. So like this side, I'm pretty sure it's way too flush, yeah. So something like this, just way it doesn't take away from the edges of your inset, but also gives you that nice paneling look. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do, we'll go ahead and apply these mirror modifiers, and we're gonna make those terracotta roof tiles for the roof section. Now, this is honestly probably the most fun part. I love doing this. Um, so we're gonna do a shift A mesh, and we're gonna add in a cylinder. We're gonna keep the vertice count at 85, and we're gonna take it, and we're gonna change a couple things on it. Now, we also wanna get a cube as well, because we're gonna use a Boolean modifier to help us get that shape. So if we zoom in on it, our X90, and then we just kind of elongate it a little bit. Nothing too dramatic. We don't want to make it too, too long. Tab into edit mode, face selection mode, and then we select the back face here. We can just scale it down a little bit. This way it creates sort of an angle from here to here. And then what we're going to do is take the cube and we're going to place it sort of right where it starts to become flat. And the reason why is because this is actually going to help us create a much better shape with our tiles. So as you can see, we got that set up there. So we can click on our cylinder, add modifier, go to Boolean, and then just click on our cube. Control A to apply, delete the cube, go back to your cylinder, go into edit mode, and then you're gonna select this face, shift select on this face, and shift select on that face. Click on delete, faces, go to modifiers, and then we're gonna click on solidify. Change the thickness to 0.1. And then bam. We have our first terracotta roof tile. Look at that. Very, very easy. Apply the solidify modifier, scale this down, and let's start changing its rotation. So the easiest way to align something to a customized rotation, something like this, is actually to go up to the snapping tool. We're going to go down and select on face. And then we're also going to select on align rotation to target and then effect rotation. Because then what we can do is if we take it, drag it up, now you do want to make sure that it's above your roof line. So that is something you, I do recommend doing just because it'll line up and work better the first time is that you can take it and then G and then just line it up to your roof. And as you can see, it lines it up facing this way, but that's totally okay. Cause then we can go R X 90 and then drop it down. And now we have that perfect alignment for this. And we could even go G and Z after disabling align rotation to target and effect rotation. We can do this. So this way it fits flush on there. And then there we go. Now we have our first tile to be able to rotate. Now we're gonna take this, duplicate it, move it off to the side. This is a spare copy for later. We're not duplicating it across the whole area, don't worry. What we are gonna do though is change from face to edge. And then we're gonna click on our roof here and we're gonna make a quick modification. So with the roof selected, tap into edit mode, go into edge selection mode with two, and then select on this edge here where it creates the peak of the triangle. If you go control B, and you'll be able to add a bevel to this. And this is just gonna give us a nice flat area to be able to add that extra section that's gonna go across along with the side paneling. So we'll go back into object mode, select on our shingle here. I'm gonna scale it down so it's a little bit smaller. And then we're gonna go R and X so I can align it to this edge. And then we're gonna go R, or sorry, G and X to align it to this edge. And then G and then double tap on Z to align it to this section. Because then you can just use the, uh, G and Z to make sure it's properly aligned. But this is what this bevel does is it makes it so that way we can easily align this edge here and then this side on this edge. Um, just making it a lot easier for placing your overall shingles. Cause then we can click on this, add modifier, and we're gonna add two array modifiers to this. The first one is gonna be a factor of X, which is totally fine. But the second one, we're gonna change the factor of X to zero and the Z factor is gonna be 0.8. Or I'm sorry, negative 0.8 because this way it's going to kind of go downwards like this. So this way, what we can do now is we can take the count and put it to about 13 there, you know, and just kind of stretching it across our roof, giving us this rough idea of what we're gonna need. So it looks like right about there. But as you can see here, we've got an overlap here. We got an overlap here. It's not really perfect, right? Well, we can easily change that by shift, or sorry, tab to go into edit mode. A to select all. And as you can see, it's only selecting this one because everything else here is temporary geometry. So we can actually modify this whole thing based off of that one location. So if we go S and then double tap on Z, 
we can then align it to this section to the roof because that's the local Z axis, right? And then we can also S and X to be able to scale in for this side as well. You know, and you can zoom in and really fine tune it. You know, I can get it really, really flush all the way around. It's really up to you on how far you want to go on it, you know, because you can really fine tune it depending on how zoomed in you are. But then now that we have this, we can go Shift D, R, Z, 180, and then G, X, Z. Again, always making sure that your model is above. Um, also, put it backwards a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so the Z value is always best to do last. So do your X and Y, and then once that's appropriate, then do the Z value. As you saw, I was struggling a little bit with getting it set up. So now the single tile that we have off to the side, we're going to take its X rotation, and we're going to set it to 90. And then we're also going to take the Z rotation and set it to 90. So this way we have a shingle that's facing in direction of our straight line. And this way we can take it, bring it over, kind of bring it up, you know, kind of get it in a rough position. Because this one we're going to manually place. Because the way that I've seen these, uh, just based off of the reference images that I've looked at, is that a lot of these top ones look like they're kind of sitting like this. Like, they're not really, they're, they're very much more prominent than the rest of the shingle tile. Um, as far as why that is, I honestly don't know. I've never done tiling with these, so at least not in real life. Um, so, you know, but we're going to do with this. We'll take this now that it's all lined up. You just kind of get it to where it's kind of roughly overlapping everything else. You don't want it to be clipping harsh in like this, just something like this. Because then we're going to go add modifier, array, change the factor of X to zero, then the factor of Z to 0.8, or I guess negative 0.8. There we go. And then we'll take the count and we'll do like what we did on the other one. We'll just take it until it lines up roughly. So it looks like 17 is going to be the magic number. And then we'll tab into edit mode A to select all. And then we'll just take it and scale it along the X axis until it lines up just like that. Then we'll go control A to apply that array. Control A twice, control A twice. And then boom, you have a log cabin. So this isn't really a texturing thing. This is just the modeling. I'm going to be doing videos on purely texturing later on. So this is the reason why I'm just doing modeling videos for this particular instance. But this cabin is going to look really nice because you actually have real topology and real geometry for your shingles, your paneling, and your logs. And everything is going to look super, super slick by the time you're done. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please hit me down in the uh, Discord or in the comments section. Always monitoring both. If you guys have any um, suggestions or requests for new videos, same suggestion. You know, I'm always looking for new ideas, so please guys hit me up. But if you found it informative, if you know, if you really thought that this was awesome, please hit that like and subscribe button to you guys. It really lets me know that, you know, when certain content is more appealing to you guys, because I'm trying to focus on, you know, stuff that you guys are finding more attractive. I'm trying to focus on that and modeling videos was something that I've noticed and blowing up despite there only being a few. So we're going to have a ton of these coming out. This is the start of a brand new channel series. So we got like 30 Unreal Engine videos. We're going to end up with so many more and then that plus all the Blender videos. So I hope you guys are excited. I know I am. But again, that's going to close out today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, stay animated.